The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. No way. No way. Hold on. Hold I'm, up. I am your middlest and now current oldest brother on the show. Oh, Wait. shit. Um, um, Justin is... Do you want to say your name? Oh, I'm Travis McElroy. Thank you. Uh, Justin's actually moving this week into a new house in beautiful Huntington, West Virginia. Into uh, a new palatial estate? It, it is. Uh, joking aside, it's a massive place that he bought entirely with your Max Fund Drive donations. Thanks, suckers. Ha <laughs> um, ha. What you didn't know was Justin was going to use that money to buy a house. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, it's A house is really the ultimate sort of production equipment you can have isn't it because uh-huh. it's like where he's, all your he's put up a lot of baffling yeah it's where all your shit is that house is 100 percent baffling uh so yeah justin won't be able to record this week because uh internet in huntington is already pretty shoddy uh and when uh relocation is involved it's it's just not a possibility so uh we got a best of episode for you this week a eh? what do we call them bros better bros best bros better bros better bros best i think yeah, I don't think there's like a that. third one in there. I, okay. I I think I suggested that as a goof for the first one, and I can't fucking believe it's still something we we do um, whenever we run but out of material. Uh, so, yeah, apologies for not having a new episode. I know it's kind of lame right after the uh, Max Fun Drive, but uh, Justin's got to Justin's gotta move. And uh, we're, we're actually under kind of a tight timetable anyway because we are leaving here in just a few days to begin our first mini tour. Uh, we're going to be we're visiting. very excited about it. Super psyched. Uh, not our last mini tour. Maybe one day we'll do a mid-sized tour. <laughs> Maybe we can get up the gumption. <laughs> and then we, we'll do a fun size tour. Uh-huh. And then we'll do one show uh, every other day for like a month. So that, we couldn't even be, be called a tour. Size tour. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to Minneapolis, Milwaukee, and Chicago uh, this week. We're very, very excited. If you're going to those shows, make sure to uh, send us questions uh, to mbmbam at maximumfun.org. Uh, and, and make sure to put the city you'll be at in the subject line. Yes, absolutely. We want to hear from you. Uh, if you've never been to a show before, we, we do have some audience questions um, that we do. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to seeing everybody in, in the Midwest. Uh, if you're in the rest of the country, don't get too comfortable. We're coming at you, coming for you. Who's and thanks the- again, thanks again to everybody who donated to the Max Fun Drive. It was by far like it's it's almost ridiculous to say our most successful Max Fun Drive ever. Oh my I god! I think yes. it was like all of the Max Fun Drive donors put together since we joined the network. It yeah. was ridiculous. It's insane. Um, thank you all so much. It's it, it is it, it's it's very flattering and humbling to say the least. Um, so yeah. Uh, we got a best of episode for you. What's the episode range, Travis? You're the one putting this one together. This is uh, 62 to 71. Ah, yes, the golden age. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The golden, the golden era of uh, of my brother, my brother and me. Uh, cool, Tra- Travis. You want to talk about your tat before we uh, get oh, going? Oh yeah, I got my my brother, my brother and me tattoo. Did you um, cry? Did you cry a little bit? I I did not, Griffin. Thank you very much. But I it did hurt. Like a mother, like yeah, that's tender skin there. Yeah, the first uh, the here's what most people don't know about um about getting a tattoo. Everyone's like, "Do tattoos hurt?" They don't at first. Like at first, you're like, "Oh, okay, I kind of I can like kind of get down. I understand what this feeling is." And then like two hours later, it's just like your same like area has just been pummeled by yeah. a needle for two hours a tender it's... a succulent area by the way travis you really should have asked me about the placement of the tattoo the location because you know i have a claim on those sweet sweet ribs 
Oh, I know, Griffin, but I made sure that the meat was not damaged. How did that... Travis and I actually have a deal where if we're ever stranded in a life or death situation, I'm allowed to eat his amazing, delicious ribs. I have no idea where that that's spawned right. from, but that's that's like that's been going for a long that's time. Canon. That's, that's a canon. That's a That's canon. I want to eat those sweet ribs. That's true. Uh, anyway, God, there's only two of us, and we've only been going for a couple minutes, and we've already like gone completely wildly off track. Um, if you want to see a picture of that uh, too, I'm going to post it on our Facebook group. Uh, my brother, my brother, and me. Uh, just search that on Facebook, and you'll find it. It's really beautiful. It was designed for me by Diana Knock. Uh, you should go check out her webpage, Intrepid Girlbot, and read her comics and see all of her amazing art. Um, I also want to say thank you to Graham at the Purple Panther Tattoo in Los Angeles. Uh, he did it for me, and it was lovely and wonderful. I highly recommend the shop. Was go it check clean? It out. Was it a clean shop? It was so clean, so wonderful, so much fun. Everyone there was super nice. That's um, my main concern is, like, every time I see a tattoo shop in movies, it's always, like, there's a drug dealer dying somewhere, and there's, like, the, I didn't a knocked see over any cans dying of drug Dew. Dealer. No, no Mountain Dew on the ground. It's very clean. There's a skeleton. Uh, there's like two all the skeletons. Mountain Dew was upright. Okay. Um, there's like three or four skeletons. There were skeletons, but I think they were purely decorative. Okay. Um, also, want to say thank you to Travis Dixon, uh, my friend who went with me and filmed it all. So I'm actually going to have a video of me getting the tattoo. Up oh, on that's YouTube exciting! Pretty soon. Yeah. And what really is the cool. tattoo? You haven't said it yet. Oh, it's a beautiful. Um, uh, a Are you looking at it right now to check? You no, forgot what it was already? I can't. It's on my ribs. I can't see it. It's a, I was trying to think of the word because I think the word is like rearing, but when like a horse is like raised up. Rearing. Has, yeah, rearing. A rearing stallion with a banner middleist across it, and it's glorious and majestic. Uh, so majestic. Is it? Is it like mid-dressage? Yes, and it's, it's also huge. It's about like seven inches high. It's, Holy it's, shit. It's that pretty is pretty big. big. Um, okay, that we've prattled for long enough thank you all for listening thank you all so much for donating we'll be back uh in a little bit to tell you about some of our wonderful sponsors uh so we will see you on the other side so uh i recently moved into an apartment with two other wonderful people I'm trying to come up with a name to refer to it as the ranch the old place but nothing has really stuck my roommate my roommate and me are getting desperate help us that's from tom I think that the ranch and the old place and, like, the commune and stuff, that's pretty cool. But let me pitch this. What about, like, an old-timey southern plantation name? Oh, wow. Like, have you called it, like, Belle Rouge? Oh, my <laughs> I love God. That. I love that. This is my home, La Croix. Can we just name the house a person's name and then have it sort of be a character in their story? Like, oh. this is Steve the house? This is Dennis. This is my house, Dennis. It's very spacious. I live Ooh, in Ooh, and then you pretend like it's, like, haunted. And you talk to it, and you're like, Dennis, it's cold in here. <laughs> Wait, is Dennis your butler? Well, it's more like um, a house spirit. Dennis, um, your spirit has, your ectoplasm has given me a chill. <laughs> How can you ever move, though? Yeah, oh, you can. leave Dennis behind. You gotta burn it down. <laughs> Dennis, as you know, with all friendships, when you have to leave one of your friends, you must kill them. If I can't have you, no one can, Dennis. Can they name it Scott Bakula? Can they name the house Scott Bakula? <laughs> this is my house, America's America's, America's treasure, <laughs> Scott Bakula. America's treasure, Scott Bakula. I live in him. <laughs> they, hold on. I live inside Scott Bakula. Can we take it to the next level? Okay. Can can the three of you do? You, Assuming you're not on a long lease, that you would be penalized for leaving, can you just go live inside of Scott Bakula? <laughs> like inner space style? Like inner space style, live in his guts. Are you uh, saying they need to invent shrinking technology? Shrink technology. Where do you live? Just send that letter straight to Scott. Uh, <laughs> just P.O. Box Scott. And uh, I've attached some notes and stuff to his eyeballs so I can read it, too. Mm-hmm. Wait Don't read my mail, Scott. <laughs> that's weird all these letters just keep getting mailed to me but it just says scott on it it's like, oh that's mine just eat the letter i'll get it <laughs> if i could control scott backless body from the inside starting inner space quantum leap to day one you guys don't even know leaped again here i oh boy here i go again so you <laughs> 
there are tiny people in my body making me make this poor decision. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> Scott Beckles. <laughs> Beckles manager would get a call and he said, Hi, is this a manager? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely Scott Bacala. <laughs> These are definitely aren't people inside of Scott Bacala. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. This has gone from living in Scott Bacala to controlling it like meet Dave style. Yeah. yeah. Like you're inside Scott Bacala's head pilot. Keep up. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly the situation. <laughs> Can you put me in a TV show? What kind? <laughs> Quantum Leap Quantum is pretty good. <laughs> you know how we've been itching to start on Quantum Leap 2, <laughs> the sequel to a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> that thing that, of course, people do all the time. If they're bringing back Dallas, <laughs> can't they bring back... I mean, they're bringing back I'm willing to bet they wouldn't call it Quantum Leap 2. I think they could just call it Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap everyone- colon some more. As everyone knows, he took a, a a brief sabbatical and never returned home. He's still out there leaping. He is. That, mm-hmm. that show had a very ambiguous ending. I'm saying it's up to us to shrink ourselves, slip and Scott back <laughs> his body, and control him to create Quantum Leap 2. Still leaping. Yep. <laughs> Leaped again. How uh, how much money, how much dollar do you want me to push for, Scott? Just the regular regular amount, <laughs> however much can you, I can normally get, get for shows. Can we three times that money? Can we triple it and then split it with your... <laughs> and then shrink it. I got a lot of mini mouths to feed. I have mini mouths to feed. I mean, by which I mean tiny mouths that live Can we make me. Scott Bakula a giant? <laughs> so that we okay, don't have so to you're sh- saying not shrink down, we just blow up, blow up Scott, Scott Bakula. Oh my god, you guys have just set up a reality where we can have a battle between giant Scott Bakula and giant gonorrhea. <laughs> Them waging waging a war. I can't like oh. lasers shooting out of his eyes. He's leaping. Although I don't know why he would have laser technology. He's just big Scott Bakula. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, bigger. Why not? I mean, why? if you're gonna shoot for the stars, shoot for the stars. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't limit yourself here. We gotta dream big. So we're all gonna go to Scott Bakula, get inside him at once, and mm-hmm. what if we just gave Scott Bakula the antibodies? To fight gonorrhea, and then it would just live in, you would live inside him and be cured. Oh, okay, so he's like an incubator. He's like a water slide, is what you're saying. <laughs> like, every yeah. every person on Earth would have to go through Scott Bakula's body, and then they would mm-hmm. be free of diseases? I don't understand <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, yeah more Scott Bakula needs to eat everybody, <laughs> is what I'm telling mm-hmm. you. Giant Scott Bakula, not regular Scott Bakula. So to answer regular. your question about what to name your apartment, Scott Bakula <laughs> should eat everybody in the world. <laughs> Glad that we could help with that one. No, giant Scott Bakula should eat everybody. Sorry, in the world. I meant to say giant Scott Bakula. If if regular Scott Bakula eats people, he's a, he's Hamill Lecter. It's, it's, oh, he's and so then so he absorbs all the gonorrhea and then flies into space and explodes, <laughs> saving everyone on Earth but sacrificing himself. This rain is really weird. It <laughs> smells like Scott Bakula and gonorrhea in a rain form. Why did we come out today? But not to- I share Travis's Netflix account. I have it hooked up to my, my PS3 so I can use his account to watch movies. And the recommendations that pop up are <laughs> probably my favorite thing like on the planet. Like, here's here's more movies like Earth Girls Are Easy. Like, Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Netflix. To be fair, the funny thing is I love really terrible 80s movies and Griffin loves horror movies. So the recommendations that they come up with is some of the most twisted shit I've ever seen. It usually just gives up. It's like, fuck it. You get Kangaroo Jack. Watch. <laughs> I hate you guys. You broke my computer brain. Uh, I love I love those recommendations though, because it's like here's some movies like Earth Girls Are Easy. Cocoon. Well <laughs> not really. I'm not actually sure that that's 2001 is Space Odyssey. Netflix, just because it has space in it, that's not <laughs> there's two different things. And also to be fair, real quick, while we're talking to Netflix, I've noticed Netflix that sometimes they'll say shit like uh, recommendations. If you liked Earth Girls Are Easy, check out Earth Girls Are Easy. That's some weak ass <laughs> shit, Netflix. Netflix, are you sure that I'll like that? <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Have you seen Earth Girls Are Easy? I have Netflix. You know I have. <laughs> We've talked about feelings? this. Netflix, I watched it on you. <laughs> I used you to watch it. <laughs> you know that. You know this truth. Can we go see Earth Girls Are Easy? We can't because we just did. 
seconds ago. I got a theatrical cut. That's the same one. <laughs> I watched that one with you. You loved it. This Remember one, you this laughed one has so much? even more Jeff Goldblum sex scenes. And he's furry in them. I know how much you like that. <laughs> oh, do you like furry Jeff Goldblum sex movies? Here's Earth Girls Are Easy. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, have you seen Das Boot? Let me start it up. What the <laughs> fuck? This is Earth Girls Are Easy again. You just changed the picture. <laughs> you changed the punk line. Actually, actually, now that I've examined it here, I can see where you've just hastily scribbled Das Boot in crayon over the Earth Girls Are Easy box and then just darkened everything so it looks like it's in a submarine. Fuck. I was trying to watch The Pianist, but I see that you went ahead and you, you just loaded up Earth Girls Are Easy. By the way, if someone makes it Earth Girls Are Easy... S- sequel in a submarine like I'll be Earth Girls are easy and oh my god there's so much water that, that would be Earth Girls are easy and deeply submerged like I would watch that I would watch that movie I think who would be okay who would be the the aliens like we, before it was Damon Wayans Jeff Goldblum and Jim Carrey who would be mm-hmm. like oh Christ that's such a power pack that's like the I mean you gotta that's assume like the new, that's like the new Hollywood rap pack right you gotta like, assume I don't know. Dak Shepard weasels his way in there right like he's, <laughs> he's <laughs> gotta get two scoops of Dax gotta get Dax up in there I see I think Jonah Hill's too big now Jonah oh he wouldn't fit in the submarine <laughs> you idiot <laughs> Asshole. Uh, I, I think Dax Shepard, I think that I think that D.L. Hughley could use a job. <laughs> uh, I, I need one more. It's and cr- Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey. Jim, this summer, Jim Carrey, Dax Shepard, and D.L. Hughley learn that Earth Girls are easy and also underwater pretty deeply. <laughs> They learn how to steer submarines and also how to please a woman. <laughs> Bring a backup diaper. Because who's that driving <laughs> the submarine? It's Garrett Top. God, this is a good movie. <laughs> when does this come out? I really do want to see it. What are you even saying? Are you saying Little Brother is going through fire old puberty? What are you saying? <laughs> hey, Mike. Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Pass me my juice. Some, I'm gonna watch some Yu Gi Oh! Okay. You down? <laughs> you gotta check this Saturday morning lineup. We got Yu Gi Oh! We got Phineas and Ferb and SpongeBob. It's fucking sick. It's fucking killer. <laughs> I spilled Capri Sun on my jam jams. Fuck. <laughs> my whole scene is fucked, Mike. <laughs> Hey, Mom, throw my jam jams in the dryer. Got Capri on them again. Fuck. Ugh. This wouldn't be so frustrating if I knew how to jerk it. Fuck this. Fuck everything. I wish I was three again. <laughs> Shit was so easy back then. I like your idea that banks are lady zoos. <laughs> That's what they are. They're lady zoos. You go through the drive thru you get to see a lady. You pay your deposit, you pay your APR, uh-huh. uh mm-hmm. and you and you get to see ladies in prison. <laughs> 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 yeah, anybody could use an automatic tele machine for anything. You know why you don't? It's because you're going to go see a lady in a prison, and you're going to think, oh, I, I should ask her out. You're going to ha- treat yourself to a little midday alternate reality fantasy about this girl but you're just stop it just go use the teller machine why do you want an extra interaction i don't get it i don't get it so i think somewhere in there we've decided it's not a good idea to ask i think we've decided that anybody in any service industry you should not you should not you shouldn't court. leave them alone they're working leave them alone oh, can you just leave them alone ha- i'll tell you what here's the message you're sending talk, let's talk about first impressions for a second you order a pizza so this person knows two things about you. One, you pay for it. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. Mm-hmm. And two, you don't cook. So yeah. that's not like a best, not a good like start. that's not a good scene. No, it's not a good start. Plus, 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 you have to decide this so quickly. You know absolutely nothing about you don't them. You know nothing about them. It's like, it's like, it's like mystery day. You look at them for five seconds, like, uh, uh, uh. 
I have to make a split second decision, and you do too. <laughs> Let's decide this right now. We're making a connection. You guys don't believe in love at first sight? No. Not what? when she's driving a shitty, rusted out Dodge Dart and holding the pizza box. <laughs> Why can't you fall in love with a girl driving it, like you said? Chavis, you're throwing a lot of hate. You're throwing a lot, a lot of hate anger. this app. I'm just saying that you know nothing about her. She knows nothing about you. Unless it's too on the I spot. I have built entire marriages out of less information than you like pizza and don't like driving to get pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you're down with Hawaiian. That must mean you're mysterious, cultured, and you have a sophisticated ballot. <laughs> Can I appreciate the intermingling, the delicate dance of salty and sweet? But not too uh, Yahoo Answers user Bunny asks, Do ghosts see you when you are having sex or when you are using the toilet? I think my house is haunted, and I don't mind, but I was thinking that if it was my dead granddad or anyone else I know who has died, then it would be embarrassing if they saw me naked or doing things with my husband or on the toilet. <sighs> hey, dummy. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Let's play into the premise that your house is haunted with your granddad. Um, do you think that in the ethereal plane, he's really super duper worried about what you're doing on the toilet? Yeah, that'd be really weird to your grandpa. Was your grandpa like a nasty freak? <laughs> is that like something you do? Like poke his head in ghost head style? Like what's going on in here? Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't right. realize. If he was oh, I won't keep you. I tried to. If he was a nasty Gramps in real life, then the, I have no reason to believe he won't be a nasty Gramps in the afterlife. In the day to day, you know, ghosts. The, the idea of a ghost is that after they die, they had unfinished business. If his unfinished business is to peep on you while you're doing it or hitting the toilet, then if his unfinished business is your unfinished business, <laughs> then we, I can't move on to... until I watch you deuce. I can't move on until you make a movement. I would watch people fuck all the time if I was a ghost. So. <laughs> Eat your yeah. ghost popcorn. What is this question? Nice. Is this? Of course they it, fucking do. Like, are ghosts not allowed to watch you fuck? Like, if you have sex in a room with a ghost in, a ghost is like, oh, I gotta go. Gotta dip. <laughs> this <laughs> is awkward. Are they just colorblind? Like they can't see naked people? Don't be a child. <laughs> this is Don't be a child. Of, of course, ghosts are watching you have sex all the time. You're not allowed to believe in ghosts and hauntings, and also believe that ghosts aren't gonna watch you fuck. And use the bathroom because of course they do the reason the rest of us are out here in fucking sane town is because i that idea is too creepy i can't i can't even begin to believe that that you know there why? are not only ghosts but they're watching me do do you know why it's creepy almost a trillion people have walked the earth mm -hmm. almost one really let that number sink in a trill of people have walked the earth the space, it's got to be, we are just, con it's like a so fog of So what you're ghosts. saying is, the chances that when I am shooting a duke, there is a ghost not only watching me, but occupying on, in the you, same space under that you. I am. You are shitting <laughs> on a ghost. You are not only having sex with your wife, you are having sex with like three to four ghosts that are inhabiting the same space as your wife's. We need to deal with this astral infestation. It's this is ridiculous. Really bad. I, uh, many of them have gone to hell. Oh, okay. For watching people so, use the bathroom. That's the, that's the secret about ghosts. Like that's the uh, that's the one rule of ghost is that you get to walk the earth, but if you watch people have sex or make a BM or if you actually see a penis or a boob, you go to hell instantly. There's so no appeal. I I'm suggesting that we can really get rid of these trillion ghosts if we all just walk around with our dicks out. Yeah, my ghosts. What are you doing? They'll say as I walk down the street go uh, with my dick out, and I'll just say, ghost busted. Busted makes me feel good. Busted makes me feel good, which really? expa explains how fully erect I am. <laughs> Don't mind me. What are you doing? I'm killing ghosts. Well, it makes me feel good. <laughs> it finally happened. Finally happened. Griffin's chasing ghosts around with his penis. So, Did you guys hear Ray Parker Jr. got locked up for public <laughs> exposure? We gotta, but we gotta get him out. He's the only one who can stop. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hold on, there's a joke about me calling my penis Slimer in here. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, we'll just take a break. Okay. But not too, not Is there anything really wrong with being a character, though? If you name any literary character... 
such as anything from Eat, Pray, Love to the Goblet of Fire. Okay. I will I will impersonate Mystic that Pizza. Mystic Pizza? Oh, that's some spooky pepperoni. Pass the insight. Okay. Okay. Um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Hey, come back here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm all skin and undies down there. Come on back. I don't know how we can how she can use this. She can't just walk around without pants and say, Hi, I'm Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Because then So You I, got any other char- you got any other characters for me or I'm all mine are empowered female groups. Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, Fried okay. Green Tomatoes. This is all I got. Mm, these are crunchy, yet sour. I just learned about growing up. <laughs> <laughs> um, beaches? What? Beaches and or Moonstruck. Uh, beaches. Uh, <laughs> Moonstruck, I have not seen. <laughs> uh, beaches. Uh, uh, wind Beneath My Wings? That's all I know. You got beaches. stumped. That was I not good. I'm Justin not sure. With the beaches beaches was trivia. Okay, was beaches a book though? I have a literary mind. I thought you were all into books. Now you have a stake in them. Um, if proves to me beaches was a book. I have to believe that there is a, a book adaptation of the film Beaches, and I have to believe that it won all the book prizes that books can win. <laughs> Best book based on beaches. <laughs> And now, the 1997 <laughs> Best, Best Book, book. <laughs> Award goes to Beaches, the book of the movie with Bette Midler. <laughs> you, can, you can only read it once, because once you get to the end, your tears have soaked the book through. Just throw it away. Buy a new Beaches book. Buy two Beaches book. I need your money! Mark Twain, come on up here and accept this <laughs> award. <laughs> I'm glad he came out of retirement to write Beaches, the book of the movie with Bette Midler. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Yahoo was sent in by Mike Bernsteel. Thank you, Mike. It's by Yahoo. Pretty cool Answer- name. Huh? Pretty cool name. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. You know what? Now that you mention it, it is a pretty cool name. It's by Yahoo Answers user yep. PDF Ghost, who says, <laughs> What are some good ways to look cool at the urinal? I'm, I'm trying to seem okay. cool at work when I'm at the urinal. Lately, while I'm peeing, I've been putting my hands in my pockets. I've thought about resting my elbow on the wall and putting my head against my hand. Just kind of chilling, acting like it's not even a big deal and I'm peeing. NBD. Any other ideas? It's not like I'm trying to hook up with any dudes. I just want people to think, man, that's a chill dude. And everyone has to go to the bathroom, so that's where you see the widest variety of people. <laughs> Bring your office chair with you and just kind of recline. Oh, God, yes. Just roll in there like, what's up? <laughs> Chillin', chill, dude. Oh, and go to the, the tiny kid's urinal. And, you know, just like lean back in your chair and hit it. It looks huge. <laughs> can you have a Mai Tai in your hand? I don't know how cool your office is, but if you can have a Mai Tai in your hand while you pee from your chair into a child's urinal while, all, while your boss watches you. If, if, you can put, if you can do it hands-free and put both hands up in a gesture that says, what the fuck, it's summer, chill, dude. Uh, and maybe, like, hang ten. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, ah. do you, If you can do some wall push-ups while you're doing it, like, <laughs> get get that, get diesel. Yeah. Get pumped. Is it too complicated to do a touchdown dance? <laughs> as you're, like, when you're done, or what? <laughs> no, like, as you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, um... I mean, it seems like a premature celebration because yeah, I mean, you don't know if, how long it's going to go or what if, you if you're going to go job, that dribble. If you do a bad yeah, job right. of it. Um, mm. Can you plank? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could if you had those like wall divider things and you just laid across them. And you tuck your wormy in one of the toilets. <laughs> while and you, you aim down. While you planked yeah. on it and you peed straight down. Mm-hmm. But if there are other people in that bathroom, I mean, if there are other people at the other urinals that you're planking on, that's going to be a scene. That's going to be a whole <laughs> ordeal. It's, and what if they got one of those big pee troughs? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. wait. I think there's laying in the trough. That would be perfect. I've seen some, Actually, people, I've seen some people at a Cubs game that just go to sleep in that trough. Is that, Daddy, is he planking? Like, no, son. <laughs> no. no, son, he's half dead. That's, that's JB. You got to pee, pee, pee around him. <laughs> Although, although, if you want to look cool, peeing on another guy. Too. 
who's the boss who's, now? Who's the boss? Oh, wait, you are the boss of this company. I'll go clean out my desk. <laughs> Sorry about your Maybe stress. just move your desk into the bathroom. Yeah. Don't pee in a urinal. <laughs> Take Dominion back over your urination. Just pee in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Pete in your pants. Say, I better go watch hey Bradley, can you hold on for just one second? Okay, go on. Can you pee okay. in your pants and then put your pants in the urinal <laughs> while everybody's watching? <laughs> and wash them in there like a little washing machine? Or, I'll get this later. Or just leave them behind. Yeah, I'll pick it up at five. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> How are things in accounts? When Bradley Cooper took the limitless pill, do you think he came up with the coolest way to ever use the urinal? Uh huh. Can you just do I what mean, he does in that movie? So you've seen the movie, right? Have not seen it, but does he use a urinal at one point? He uses he uses, uses all the urinals. Uh huh. All of them at once. <laughs> limitless Limitless pill gives you five dicks that are very accurate. Each one. You know how human beings only use twenty percent of their dicks. <laughs> Bradley Cooper uses a hundred percent of his five dicks. He does five hundred percent all the time. That's what Limitless is all about. Mm hmm. I thought is I that what it's about? Uh-huh. I to be, see to be fair, if that's what it was about, it would have been a way better movie. Mm-hmm. Just a ring of dicks, mm-hmm. a never-ending <laughs> ring of dicks around his like a like a Cthulhu. Like a, it's a very Cthulhu-esque situation. Uh huh. Um. So I guess those are some cool things you can do. Can you flex? Can you thumb wrestle the guy next to you? There's so many <laughs> options. Can you thumb wrestle uh-huh. yourself? You can scream at the top of your lungs. Scream not again. Or I finally got it. Yeah. I got it. Can you open up a window and pee out the window? Just like, and put your arms up in a manner that says, I don't fucking care, man. I think that part's good. I think that part is non negotiable. You gotta put your It's hands. gotta be the, like, fuck it. Yeah. Just pee in. And I do love dropping, like, Pants and underwear. Hey, by the oh, way, be a be a girl. I think is a pretty dope way to win at the <laughs> urinal. If you're a girl, I think the day is yours. How? Hey, Dave, check this out. High five. I got it. You go to the stall and you sit down to pee, but you leave the stall door open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, occupy. Oh, oh. Uh, no, don't. What worry. are you looking at? Hey, we're all dudes. Hey, all dudes here. <laughs> I'm just taking a break, taking a taking a relaxer while I go. This one's for me. This one's this, have a, this Tucker. This Tucker's for me. Does anybody have an O magazine I can peruse? <laughs> <laughs> Got some good housekeeping in here. If you guys, you guys want to read? Oh, you can't read. You're standing up, dummies. You still use <laughs> urinals? <laughs> what a joke. Hi. Right, Real quick, we've got some sponsors for this week's episode, um, and it's some of our favorites. Yeah, um, this we you could even call this a Bros Better Bros Best of sponsors. I think that that would be accurate, Griffin. I think that that's absolutely correct. Uh, our first sponsor this week, you know them, you love them. It might be on your genitals right now. Me undies, <laughs> Tabasco hot sauce. <laughs> Tabasco hot sauce. That's what are you into? Daisy sour cream. What the fuck? Why what's, did you put? Th- what's what are your you doing? Weird shit? Uh, me undies. It's it's you're gonna wear underwear. You're just gonna do it unless you're one of those weird people that's never wearing underwear. In which case, like we get it, you're spirited and earthy and stuff. But put some underwear on because it feels better, especially when the underwear you've got on is me undies. And it's gonna keep your balls from rubbing against your jeans. I wore them all day today while I was doing yard work. Was doing some very hot and heavy hedge trimming. And I got back inside, and my whole body was damp like a sponge cake. And then I took my MeUndies off, and it was like a mummy down there. It was so dry. (laughs) It was weird. I was mummy-like in one zone, and the rest of my area was sponge cake. When I travel, I only wear me undies for that very because you know you start you sit on a plane for like four hours. Listen, we're we're getting into the nitty gritty right now, but we're gonna talk exclusively about genital moisture. But I'm just saying, like it keeps your zone very pleasant on long plane rides, long car drives. I I'll, t- I'll tell you this: a uh, me undies like pop up store, you know, opened up uh, in in our neighborhood. Oh my god! And Teresa and I went down and each bought like three pairs. So like Fuck I'm yeah. slowly turning over my whole underwear wardrobe to me undies. That's a good it's, call. When I get to the bottom of my me undies in my lineup, it's time for laundry. I, yeah. I don't want to do anything but wear me undies. Here's the thing. MeUndies is dedicated to offering the most comfortable underwear that fit great, don't ride up on you, and literally 
pull moisture away. Literally pull moisture you can away hear from your the skin. sucking. You can hear the sucking sound, and it's. I'll, I won't lie. That part's a little bit upsetting. I wish that they didn't make a loud. Like, it's hard while, to talk. It's hard to have a conversation over them. Like I can barely hear you. But right after a while, now. it just kind of like tunes out in the background, you know, and you yeah, won't yeah. even notice it anymore. I sleep to um, them actually now. The white noise of the sucking sound. It really helps. It's environmentally friendly. The materials they use are sustainably sourced, um, and also they look great. They like, look that's super the thing. Good. There's tons of different uh, uh, tons of different patterns. Uh, mm-hmm. They're for men and women. You can get matching pairs if like you and your loved one want to do that. It's pretty cute you guys uh go here's what i want you to do i want you to go me on i want you to go to me undies.com no matter what go to me undies.com because then you can look at pictures of people wearing underwear and that's awesome but go to me undies.com slash my brother not only will you look at pictures of people in underwear you get 20 percent off your first order and free shipping it's amazing it's an amazing deal for some amazing underwear you have go, no reason not to do it go get at it um we also have another sponsor this week can i tell you about them Oh, I, I mean, I already know about it, but sure. I was more talking to my computer monitor, I guess. Oh, like, um, the, like the general you. Yeah. The, the, the royal the, you. The ghost in the machine. Um, I want to tell you about Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a tasty, tasty meal delivery service uh, that for less than $10 a meal, uh, they'll get you the fresh ingredients that you need to make these delicious meals. They are going to be perfectly proportioned with step-by-step instructions on how to make each recipe. Uh, well, you're not making the recipe, are you? You're making the food that the recipe details. Well, and uh, I'll tell you this. like Teresa and I love Blue Apron. We pretty much – it's pretty much taking over like our dinner schedule. Um, and I'll say this, man. It's, it says it's for two people. But you're going to end up with leftovers, and like it's going to feed you for like another two meals. It's such a good deal. Double food. Um, It's double food. What do you you party on? Because they got they got chili blackened cod with epizote. Fuck, I didn't say that right. Probably. No, I think you nailed it. Chili blackened cod with epizote, grapefruit, avocado, and rice salad. They got lamb meatball stew. What's your What's your jam? Man, I tell you what, we just made. um, They were these. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the meat was. I want to say it was like bison, but it was burgers on pretzel buns with this cheddar sauce. It was insane. So good. Like, this is the thing. Here's the best thing about Blue Apron. Not only do they send you the stuff, right? So, like, everything's right there to make the meal. Like, you still get to feel the accomplishment of making the meal. They give you step-by-step instructions. It's so clear. It's so – even if you know nothing about cooking, they tell you everything you need to do to do it. And then you're like, I made this awesome meal. Look what I have wrought. And it really gives you this, like, very empowering feeling. You can impress, uh, you know, if you're trying to impress a date. It's a pretty solid – You feel like a a food god. Uh, You can check out this week's menu and get your first two meals for free – which is fucking bonkers, by going to blueapron.com slash my brother. It's such a good deal, people. Do I'm it. a big fan. I our sponsors tend to win me over pretty quickly, and then I'm like, well, I'm just doing this from now on. Like Teresa and I pretty much only wear me undies and eat blue apron. In your undies. In our undies. But we can't get it on our undies. Nope. That yeah, stains. Uh, our next our next ad uh, is for uh, 199X at www.agamewithoutmechanics.com. And then vote for it on Steam Greenlight. 199X is a lightly interactive adventure game that explores the relationship between the player, you, and Clara, the person you control. It is funny, sad, and everything in between. Catch the fever. I love that tagline. It seems so wildly incongruous with the, the game that they're presenting. It's like, catch, catch and collect all of the Claras and then trade them with your friends on the playground. Who can battle? Who can, who can, who can level up the strongest Clara? <laughs> Uh, quick description for their website in 199x you control Clara. I think it's 1990x, like like a year. Oh sure, okay. Um, that, you control Clara. That's the problem. The yeah. doctors say she's delusional, but you know that can't be true. She doesn't seem to believe it either. The two of you need to work together to find a cure. That sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna check that out, and you should too. Uh, we've got another, and so that hey, can I control Bulbasaur instead? Well, you is that even an option in this video game? Did they even consider that? I so, haven't played through it yet, Griffin, so I don't know. But go they, to www. Did they even dot- consider Kangaskhan? 
Go to www.agamewithoutmechanics.com and check it out. One last thing. If you are on the search for a brand new comedy podcast to suit all of your pop culture cravings, look no further than Almost Famous. This is a uh, podcast that is hosted by Hollywood hotshot Alex Wareheit and esteemed academic Caitlin Sabold as they discuss pop culture, film, television, celebrities, actual real life, and everything in between as they struggle to become almost famous. Alex and Caitlin share outrageous personal anecdotes, put a fresh spin on pop culture, and even make some heartfelt social commentary, all while being uproariously funny. Check out their website at almostfamouspodcast.com and search Almost Famous in iTunes to subscribe today. Go Just check them out. Dude, go check them out. Just don't unsubscribe from us. Because we feel every one. We feel, it. we feel our life force waning. With every unsubscription. Speaking of Almost Famous, while I was getting my tattoo, I yeah. took a break to like walk around and get some blood flowing. Yeah. I stepped outside uh, with my friend Travis, and he was like, hey, look over there. And it was Sam Rockwell and Joaquin Phoenix just like hanging out at a coffee oh, shop. Man, I, to be a fly on that glass. Well, it was wonderful because I had my shirt half off, so like the oh, tattoo man. was still exposed, which also meant my gut was exposed. So, like, Sam Rockwell looked over at me at one point, kind of registered I was there, and went back to his conversation, and I was like, oh, great. So, if nothing else, I know Sam Rockwell, so I'm a beer gut today. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix unbuttoned his shirt and showed you his 14 horse tattoos. Mm Mm-hmm. And he was like, ah, good luck, man. I was like, thanks, Joaquin. And he was like, do you want to be in my next movie? I said, Joaquin, I'm flattered. And he said, it's cool, man. So, Inherent Vice 2, look for it. Look for it. Keep walking the line some more. Run the line. A line... Even further. A line to remember. Uh, that was a lot of things, a lot of jokes that were thrown at you. See, there is some new material in this episode. <laughs> Fuck, we're going to have to put this best of episode in the next best of episode, Trav. Oh, uh, remember that time when Sam Rockwell saw Travis's gut? Ah, classic bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening again and for donating again. We're just going to keep thanking you for donating for like the next year, probably, until the next Max Fun Drive. I hope that's It's okay. all going to bleed together. Uh, back to the goofs. Oh, Everybody, man. I want complete silence. Griffin, you have to read the whole. Let's thing. see how long we can go. Okay. Uh, oh man, this is a uh, Bak- Baka Otaku thirty. Good start. Is there some music you can underlay here later when you're editing together? Something. Yeah, I'll throw, nice on, I'll throw down some Nora Jones. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that would be great, actually. Having been to my fair share of spanking parties, I'll happily answer this, uh, though more information can be found in an essay that I posted on my spanking blog months ago. The link to my blog can be found on my profile, though it'll take some digging to find the correct entry. Unless a party has a specific theme, like teacher-student, most people will simply wear clothes that are comfortable and casual. Spankers may tend to wear clothes that are more formal or authoritative, and spankies... <laughs> Hush. And spankies and alpha, alpha. <laughs> and spankies leans towards clothes that are loose fitting or easily removed, allowing faster access to bare their bottom. Uh-huh. <laughs> skirts are common among female spankies, with pleated schoolgirl skirts being the most common. Some girl people will dress in role play though, and there are some parties devoted entirely to role play. Yes, you may sit and observe if you don't feel like playing. No one is. <laughs> No one is forced to play, and many parties have the attendees wear stickers that show the orientation for their night, top, bottom, or switch. I just threw a pen across the room because I was so like, yes, I, I gave blood today. This is a crazy sticker. And include a designation for observer or newbie. Uh, as Phil pointed out, you may be encouraged to play, but most people won't be pushy if you're new. The best parties will give a new person a chance to feel comfortable before they start playing. <sighs> Most parties do have an entrance fee, or at least ask for a donation to cover costs, or uh, that the attendees bring a cup. Co- or that the Staying attendees the bring a co- the aloe vera, or that the attendees bring a covered dish to share. Oh, oh who you. brought the fried kale? This is good. Ow, fuck, ow! <laughs> Not yet, Steve. Jesus, God fuck! Look at my it. sticker. I'm an observer. Check my sticker, Jesus. <laughs> I'm the caterer to this spank party. <laughs> God damn. I'm clearly dressed in a more authoritative manner. I am the swanger. I like to wear a trench coat to the parties and tell them that I'm the covered dish. <laughs> <laughs> the 
best parties also offer the most for the least amount of cash. From what I've heard, Shadow Lane costs far too much for what is available. And I went to a Crimson Moon party and can say that the same is true for all of them. Crimson Moon, fuck you. The fuck most, you, that's made up. The most bang for the buck. Oh, this is promising. The most bang for the buck, from my experience, is the Texas All-State Spanking Party. As their entrance fees are always low, yet the party is huge, particularly the years that it takes place in Dallas. Road trip. Griffin must go. I'm going to shave down to a mustache. I'm going to fucking show up to that. Oh, God. Uh, larger parties take place in hotels and resorts. Smaller parties usually at private residences. I enjoy the seclusion of a cabin party. There's something alluring to me at the public no nature shit, of a hotel you fucking... party. There are also icebreaker games to get everyone comfortable when a party starts. So spanking can begin. Uh, demos, vendors, contests, and special events. Hey, guys. Hey. It's just really <laughs> quick. Um... I mean, I get, um, like, if, what's the, what's the, is it, does it go trust falls, then low ropes activities, and then you fucking punish someone's, just punish that ass. What's the, cor- <laughs> what is the, explain to me, you played the minister's no, it's, cat. It's, you, no, it's name game, n- keep the balls in the air, uh-huh. and then paddle till bloody just chunks. Just fucking wail on that ass. <laughs> I punish that punish- student, and then you go back to low ropes. Is it light as a feather, stiff as a board, and then cat of nine tails? Yeah. Or I can never remember. See, I like to use spanking to break the ice before I do something uncomfortable. Like, hey, I'm Justin. <laughs> Low ropes Ask to this borrow way. money or something. You want some Sprite? But not too, not familiar. Hey, I have a Yahoo. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'd like us to explore. Um, this one was sent in by Terry Dutton. Thanks, Terry. It's by Yahoo. Take that Susan. thing for Terry Dutton. Terry Dutton. Uh... <laughs> Terry Dutton sent this in. Thank you. It's by a Yahoo Answers user Morgan Grutman, who asks... Jake, that thing. It's thing. Morgan Grutman. Morgan Grutman. Uh, picking the perfect quote, opinions needed. Getting a tattoo at the end of the month, and I, oh, thought, no. I thought I had the perfect saying picked out, but I've come across a few more that I just love. Uh, if I could have all of them put on, I would. Just need opinions on which one sounds slash would look best. I am getting a horse tattoo on my back. Uh Uh-huh. Not sure if it will be a rearing horse or a galloping horse, but here are the quotes I can't pick from. Elegance, beauty, spirit, fire. (laughs) Okay. So that's the first one. Not a quote. Not a quote at all. Two hearts, one passion. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Okay. Hoof prints never fade. What? They not... (laughs) <laughs> to, they don't together scientifically together. proven wait 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 okay go ahead Griffin. together as one Are wait they... I was gonna put this in the tattoo section but who would know better than horse lovers themselves I don't want any big long quotes or anything something small and simple but gets to the point it gets to the point of how I'm a crazy person is wait hold two, on two hoof prints one passion Whoa. two Two hearts, one passion. Which I love. Like, what's the, is the passion going? Like, just moving, moving forward quickly. Like, that's my thing. I'm also, really what about the horse's second heart? Uh huh. Yeah. Didn't think about that. Time what warp. do you want to bet? Warp. What do you want to bet? This person does not in any way own a horse. No, no horse. horse. Really, they want to remind themselves to save up for it. And they okay. think that this, this is sort of throwing their hat over the fence. Like, you get this, you got to have a horse. People are going to think you're an asshole. Elegance. Beauty, <laughs> spirit, fire. Hey, the way that you ride a horse is really bad if fire is involved in the equation. <laughs> Maybe you leap through fire as you're going to rescue. Oh, what I write a- sh- What shitty quotes did they have before that they heard these and went, oh, no, that's way better. Now I'm up in the air. Do uh, Did anybody make any suggestions or anything? Uh, a lot of people are down with elegance, beauty, spirit, fire. Yeah, uh, they it's think very a rearing, elegant. A rearing horse would be better. Um I really like hoof prints never fade, but here are some you may like. Oh, Christ. In riding a horse, we borrow freedom. Do we know? Hey, do you mind if I, uh... Excuse me, horse, can I Can get I just a for a freedom? second, let me... That freedom looks pretty neat. Can I just check it? <laughs> Pardon um, me, neighbor. Can I get a cup of freedom? Uh, this, uh... And the horse just looks back and says, you look with your eyes, not with your hands. Hey, I am bone dry on freedom. Can I just mount you for a second and... <laughs> Just a little. Can I to write a, to write a, or can I finish? <laughs> to ride a horse is to ride the sky. 
No, this is, the problem I have with these quotes is that they're objectively untrue. To ride yeah. a horse is to ride a horse. <laughs> That's Unless all you're doing. Horse. It's a galloping bundle of bones and meat, and you're riding it, and that's it. Her friends <laughs> do, in fact, fade pretty quickly. They barely even think. Like, what are you doing? My horse is made of clouds and fire, and it sucks to be on it. It <laughs> sucks to touch this horse. Horses, horses lend us the, the wings we lack. What? You're making horses these up by yourself Horses lend us the wings now. we lack. I'm not making these up because I'm not a fucking crazy person. What? Hey, everyone, quit borrowing shit from horses. Like... <laughs> They are not good lenders. There are neither a borrower or a lender or a horse be. That's my to see what, for poor Richard. To see what man has made, one must get in a car. To see what God has made, one must get on a horse. No, to see what God has made, one must get in a horse. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice work, Big G. <laughs> you really grosses me out with all these horse parts. Big G, this is some sticky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I did think I was going to freeze to death out here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Thanks Big G, I thought horse. these smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> hey, horse, can I borrow your, well, your life? Uh, you may not get this one back. Hey, horse, can I borrow your heat guts so I don't die? <laughs> <laughs> I need your guts heat to keep my bones warm. Mm, you're so good mm. inside. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a, I, how about this quote? I'm going to build so- a chair from your bones. <laughs> How about this quote? To ride a horse is to borrow the entire Billy Joel discography. <laughs> How yeah. do you figure? Because it like makes sky. as much sense as anything else. Uh, if your horse if was... this is moving out, then I'm moving out. <laughs> to fly if... a horse up in the sky is you are high. You are having uh, a reaction to drugs. <laughs> this is a different answer. Okay. If your horse is a racehorse... You were a great champion when you ran the ground shook. The sky opened and mere mortals parted, parted the way to victory. We'll all meet you in the winner's circle. We'll all put a blanket of flowers on your back. <laughs> okay. So like a head-to-toe tattoo. Why were the mortals on the track? <laughs> Get out of the way! Get out of the way, there's horses! I, I feel like horses are kind of like, uh, kind of like you were talking about with like cats and other house pets. Can we just leave horses alone? Can we just let them run free and beautiful like and not horses, try to capture their essence with your back meat? It's it's got to be it's got to be rough because anyone can become a cat person just by buying a cat. You can buy a cat nowadays and take care of it for its entire lifespan for like 15 bucks, like mm-hmm. NBD. Horses you really got to go for that crazy. You right. really got to that's a lifestyle change. A crazy crazy lifestyle change. You can't just you can't take off for the weekend. No. To be fair, have, have you ever watched Animal Cops Houston? Yes. It doesn't always require a life change. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, I brought this horse. It's in my apartment now. Oh, shit. I forgot I had that horse. <laughs> what? Uh, There's crazy. a horse behind your barn. You haven't fed it in three weeks. Guys, oh, I, shit. Duh, fuck. I haven't gone in that guest room in a long time. <laughs> but not too, not let's, uh, let's do a Yahoo answer question. Um, this one was sent in by Pandapocalypse. Thanks, you. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Uh, I'm all yours. Who says? Who asks? Best places for sex in college? (laughs) Just curious, because sometimes it's hard to find a good place. I try to do it in my dorm sometimes, but it's not easy, because I would never want to do it in front of my roommate. That would look horrible on my part. So please, what places did you have sex while you were in college? Thanks. There's only one place to do it. Yeah, in your bed. Dean, Dean's couch. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, Dean, asshole. Macaroni! I just had some sex on your couch, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> hey, big man. I just had sex on your couch, Dean, asshole. Don't sit on the middle cushion anymore. That one's mine. <laughs> hey, I can play that with my own human musk, Dean. <laughs> On That's Human my- Musk was the name of my college jam band. <laughs> see those see those wavy lines coming off of that's my sex steak. Uh, I hate brutal. you, Dean. I hate you so much, Dean. <laughs> Why wouldn't you let me into your college? <laughs> I'm not a student here. But not too uh, uh, here's a here's a fun suggestion. I think it's fun for the whole family. Uh, dress your kid like a um, a doggy. 
Mm-hmm. And then put it in a cage and then leave it home and go get drunk. What? <laughs> Party for Halloween. The spirits are out tonight. Me what and you... mom, go in now and you're gonna be alright in your cage we made for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw some candy in there and it'll be fine. Put some candy in the clothes hanger cage that we made for you. <laughs> You just rebend them. You just bend them in the bars. Babies aren't strong. It won't take yeah. long. Just go out and get drunk with mom. You guys deserve it. You've earned a night on. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten p.m. Do you know where your baby is? Do yes, you? in a cage. He's in the baby dog. He's. It's okay. He's like you dress up like a dog. <laughs> He's a baby dog. That makes Do it better. Know the kind of irreparable harm you've done to your relationship by arguing about costumes. You gotta get on a retreat, and by a retreat, I mean go to Shakey's and get you drunk. Make sure you take lots of pictures of that, too, so that when uh, your kid turns 18 and kills everyone he knows, you're going to show those pictures to the new Just district. throw some Alpo in the cage and go get your drunk. Uh, get that drunk. Mr. Stevenson, I, I'm i sorry I'm placing you under arrest. Your son was locked in a cage unsupervised. What the fuck? That's a dog. That's a dog. Uh, that is actually your child in a dog. Well. Color me embarrassed, officer. Look this at is... his nose. I have painted it brown like a dog's nose is brown. <laughs> I have, gotten... officer. You are terrible at improv games. I, <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to say yes, and we yes buy and it. yes and yes and my baby's a dog in a cage. <laughs> yes and do you want some of this beer? I have extra because we have so much in us. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a brewski? And we'll forget about this, and also forget about the kid. He's fine for another hour or so. <laughs> Let's go play some foosball. Let's go play. Let's go fooze it up, copper. And then it turns out that the cop is a baby dressed as a cop. Oh, <laughs> accepted. Baby police, you just got busted by the highest authority in the land. <laughs> baby, baby police? Baby police is the highest authority in the land. Sentient baby. We are under baby martial law. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> and also restrictive. <laughs> this is a baby police state. All TVs will watch Nick Jr. <laughs> <laughs> All things will go boring when you hit them. <laughs> the cow says moo, you say nothing. Oh, fuck. I snap my fingers, you pull out a tit. This is baby law. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, out of things now. You know, I would watch uh, a legal drama called Baby's Law, where it's just about baby lawyer. Um, Babies... Don't grow up to be adults, because this is what you do. You think about baby anarchy. Mm-hmm. And, um... Which is adorable and terrifying at the same time. Someone was sent him by Daniel McKinney. I'm almost certain Justin just looked at it. It's by Yahoo Answers user Garland Garcia, who asks, Is it legal to have sex with trees on your own property? Oh... Oh, my. Now, the top answer is, unless the tree can be seen by a passerby, it's not illegal. It's not as if there's a precedent to making it illegal, despite the foolishness of the question. I've decided to address it seriously. <laughs> and I, appre- I appreciate that, John Lennon. <laughs> which is your username. Yeah, I don't think that that's accurate. Oh, yeah, sure. If you have a high... Here's what's terrifying about this question. And why I decided to discuss it. No, I, by accurate, do you think I meant the answer or the fact that that is John Lennon? Or the fact that there's no precedent for this. I know. I agree with that part. I don't agree with that. That he's is John Lennon. Ghost. He's, John Lennon's he's ghost. a ghost in the machine, but he's trapped in Yahoo Answers forever, and he just wants out so bad. <laughs> Please let him on another site. He can't find his way out because it's a labyrinth. Yeah. Take it from me. Our show is really about trying to find John Lennon's ghost hidden in Yahoo Answers. Hidden in the hedge maze of terrible. This is the closest we've ever gotten. Is this um, gentleman's concern that a tree would report him to the police? For tree se- for arboreal sex crimes? Uh-huh. I don't think that that's a concern. Uh, then what other law, besides just being completely indecent in public, which mm-hmm. is a law no matter what you're having sex with... Wrongo. Wrongo. What? Here's what I'm saying. Here's what's upsetting. If your fence is high enough... People could be fucking trees all People the time. People could be fucking trees. They could have trees fucking them or uh, each other. <laughs> they could have grown the trees into a position that makes it look like they're having sex. I'm talking about branches and the bird holes Ugh. and a fucking, man, a nasty Ugh. mess. A nasty so wait, mess. Is your concern that this is, like, rampant? I'm saying, who knows, if you walk by a house with an eight-foot fence, you just go ahead and assume that they are fucking something they should not be. 
Yeah. And spray paint on the fence. Tree fuckers go home. Yeah. Fuck some trees. <laughs> and then just spend every night worrying about white ash beetles. Cause yeah. They will come for you. Termites. Um, I mean, I think people are stumping on the reg. You do? Mm-hmm. You think people are stumping right now somewhere in this well, world? Well, that someone's... explains. Okay, that, now I get the t shirts. Uh, stumpers have wood. Yeah. I get it now. <laughs> over um <laughs> it upsets me that we can find loopholes in the legal system <laughs> to allow this kind of thing shouldn't aren't laws supposed to keep you from doing really upsetting things isn't that the whole I idea i want the fucking law and order special victims unit to like kick in the door and be like hey sex police don't move <laughs> why do we even have special that on the floor unit? tree fucker yeah why no, even have the SVU if they're not going to stop shit like this from happening? Because psychically, it's in my brain. Like, there's a tiny. Here's what you guys may not realize about my brain is just by saying that word, saying mm-hmm. like tree fucker. Now in my brain, there's a constantly a twenty four seven until the day I die, a tiny man fucking a tiny tree in my brain, <laughs> and he's just shouting tree fucker, tree, tree fucker, fucker, tree fucker, fucker, tree fucker, or tree man penis intercourse, intercourse, intercourse. <laughs> like, it can't be stopped. Please stop the noise. But you can't stop it. <laughs> I want fucking Ice T to kick in the door and be like, "Stop SVU!" And he can't do that in your brain. He's got to. Yeah, hold on. I gotta incept him in there. Get, get him out, Brain Ice T. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Guys, Griffin, Griffin, Griffin's eyeballs are bleeding. <laughs> I think he incepted too much. Uh, don't have sex with trees. Don't day. have sex with. Guys guys have, if only to avoid the horrifying half human, half tree babies. <laughs> and also the dick splinters. Stop it. <laughs> Listen, you motherfuckers. Dryads have to come from somewhere. Oh, man. And I want them to walk the earth, and this is the only way to get it done. It may not be pleasant. It may not even be. It's questionably legal, but mm-hmm. if we're going to have someone to bestow upon us, like special tree powers dryad and stuff, magic dryad magic. I, yeah. I would like to imagine that dry out babies are just completely like boring and normal people. And you see like a half human, half tree, and you're like, "Give me your wisdom." And he's just like, "Dude, I, I work at the plant. I got nothing. No hey, pun intended. I work on my ship models." <laughs> when you guys were um, younger, did you ever read the the Taking Tree? <laughs> <laughs> Take the tree. <laughs> Give me that sap. <laughs> God. Oh, I'm sad in my brain. Yeah, me too. Sucks. Hey, this Monday, my wife and I will find out if we are indeed going to be parents. We're excited at the possibility and have started trying to plan ahead things to get. One area we're stuck in is a baby-themed room. We wanted something different from the normal animal-themed room. Whoa. Whoa, dog. <laughs> Whoa. Animal-themed room. Nope, we're sticking with animal. And felt that the Wise Brothers 3 would provide us with some great thoughts. That's from Confounded in KC. I'm going to throw out, and this is kind of meta, but what about a baby-themed, baby-themed room? Oh, man. And you just paint babies all over the walls. Yeah, and like with signs like, you are this. Like, I love <laughs> that. I think that's important for human beings to know what and who they are pretty much instantly. So they yeah. can start growing and learning from it, like... I think you learn from yourself. Maybe, you, maybe instead of a baby, it's like a zygote or like a oh. or like a fetus, and you're like, you were this. Now get better. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. What if you put? What if you took it as an educational thing, and you uh, put just a ton of objects in the room that would say maybe like out loud, perhaps with one of the um, greeting card sound chips, they would say out loud what they are. But they would all do it at the same time, and they would do it 24 <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> chair, 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 Bed, bed, bed. I am drums. I drawers, am drums. Drawers. Dad's hidden pot. Dad's pump hidden pot. Shoes, pump shoes. Pump shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you hide your pot in the baby's room, Dad? You had a touch on him that just said, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> and just be Justin Bieber. <laughs> Oh, that would be that would make for probably a Unibomber. That would yeah. probably make for a Unibomber situation. <laughs> How was my babyhood? I will tell you. Not great because I'm looking at that lamp and it's screaming in my brain. So <laughs> it could be better. I all I could think of when I blew up the building was, well that's one building of things that won't be screaming. <laughs> Building, baby building, today. building, 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 windows, windows, 
I have to kill the building. <laughs> but now it's screaming pit, empty pit, empty pit, empty pit. It's just like my heart, 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 heart. But not too not familiar. Hey, but I, can we, can we, uh, I, w- I want to take a brief hiatus here to tell you about the text. Oh, yeah. That I just got from my father, our I father. I. Did you guys get Me this? too, yes. Okay. So he just sent a, um, a text that says, in quotes, what day is it, son? What day? What could that... Is that a reference to the hit film We Are Marshall? I think it, it has is. to be. Oh, I but think it's, the response uh, to that is football day it, or it, something? It, no, listen, listen. Let's explain this because it, people are going to think our dad is like some sort of crazy 9-11 guy. Uh, I don't think he knows it's 9-11. <laughs> I think the three of us should probably text him. I'm texting um, him right so now, that, like, and I'm asking him if he means September 11th. Okay, hold on. Let's all take a moment. We need I, to... Uh, we need to text him back because I don't want our dad like walking through the day what? with like, a spring in his step. Like, <laughs> it's game day! Hey, oh. everybody. Are you excited? Okay, um, my message is sent. I look, I've look. i been looking forward to today for so long. Yeah. It seems okay. like it's been ten years since this last happened. By which I mean football. <laughs> I love I love football getting the points, scoring points. I, I get all the points. But not too much. This one was sent in by Jesse Thorne. Thank you, Jesse. It's by Yahoo Answers user Miserable Little Smug Bastard. Oh. Oh, my. Who asks, ladies. <laughs> Already winning. Ladies, if someone paid you $300,000 or pounds to sit on a real human skull, would you sit on it? <laughs> what? <laughs> would you cross your legs? If you did, you would get an extra 300000 I have actually asked this question before. Ah, sincerely, Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> Love Jack Skellington. <laughs> so many questions. First off, ladies, if you pick the $300,000 above the 300,000 pounds, then you are a rube. Yeah, I was going to say conversion rate. Yeah. I think maybe that's it. It's like a deal or no deal thing. Like you could take the $300,000 or, or 600000 if you cross your legs while you do it. Or you can get it in pounds and have to spend 10 minutes getting it converted to the bank. Yeah, but that's an awkward story to tell the cashier. Hey, how'd you get these 600,000 pounds? Uh, I sat these... on a real human skull. <laughs> these smell like calcium and <laughs> taint. Are you one of those bone jockeys? Are you a bone jockey? Ugh. Ugh. Your, your people sicken me. <laughs> hey, Is... Carl, we got another one. <laughs> Look at this one. She sat on a human skull. A she got one. boned. She got boned. <laughs> and then they all chuckle. Chuckle. There are so many questions. God damn it. Is this skull inside of skin and muscles of a living human being? Is imagine. it a last request kind of thing? Is this how someone wants to get buried? Is, That's what I'm saying. Is this a Devo video? <laughs> Are we talking about a Devo? Is this a Devo right now? Are you pulling a Devo on us? Are how you much? A Vladi Devo? Why, why does the price point start out at $300,000? <laughs> why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you haggle up? <laughs> I just noticed in the related questions on the sidebar, this question by Miserable Little Smug Bastard. Ladies, if someone paid you $100,000 or pounds to sit on a real human skull, would you do it? <laughs> He's driving a hard bargain. If you are finished with this question. What do I have to say to get you on this skull you know, before you leave today? If you're offended by this question, then ignore it. Would you cross your legs? If you did, you would get extra. It would be the skull of a serial killer. What? Who's you that? laughed that out when you brought it to 300000 Who? He's trying to... He's driving a deal. He's trying to make this happen. Griffin, what is his username again? A miserable little smug bastard. Okay. A miserable little smug bastard. He's like... He's been negotiating this. He's for all his foibles. He's a pretty smart negotiator. He started low and made a serial killer skull. He's like a he's like a, a Ron Popeil. Like okay, <laughs> I'll take out. It's no longer a serial killer skull. Just a regular skull. Just and a real human skull. And also this set of sham wows. Yeah, I will yeah. throw in a a solid flavor injector. <laughs> 
Oh God! So, Would you slap chop a real human skull for? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it up to 400k. <laughs> you do have to sit on it before, but afterwards you'll slap chop it into non-existence. It would just be dust. I will sit on two horse skulls for 50k. No, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is one of those circumstances where I would rather that this were not a hypothetical question, because if he had some purpose behind this, for some reason that makes it okay than him just sitting around wondering. Travis, the amount of work that he has put into negotiating, just yelling into the internet, I, he, it has to have been resolved, right? It has to, it has to have happened. It has to have. Has it to have f- happened by now. Do you realize how much money 300000 What would I not do for $300,000 or pounds? Because st- sit on a real human skull? Yes. Is, it ain't on that list. Yeah. Uh, I would make the skull. I would. Knife yeah. and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would turn the person into a skull is what I'm saying. I'm such a fucking sucker, though, because it, uh, that first time around, when he's like a hundo K... I would have jumped at it. You would have taken it. I wouldn't even know. thought to hold off. You got you got to check the trade magazines. <laughs> What's the going rate right now mm-hmm. for a? Like, uh, you know, I actually got a Groupon for oh. uh, sitting on a human skull. Yeah, mm-hmm. a bunch of my friends and I are going to do it for for fifty k. The problem the is same skull. Yeah, yeah, it's the same skull. So there's oh. always a huge line. You really yeah. got to. And after a while, you know, yeah, oh, it gets man. warm. That skull is pretty rowdy. The thing is, is he doesn't even clarify and say, like, you have to be nude or it has to be set. He just wants you to sit on it, cross your legs, and get off and leave. Can we, like, let's talk about the crossing the legs thing. Is he wanting us to incubate this skull? Like a, like a, like a mama bird? Uh. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. You get $300,000. Uh, but he doesn't say naked. So what yeah. he's saying is just sit on, just you just roll up in your mom jeans, sit on it, sit cross on your it. legs, get off, leave, get out of here. Okay, get your can, money. I need to know, can a human skull support the weight of Fuck a fully no. grown It takes like woman. 14 pounds of pressure. To, we, are, we are just skeletons with a big egg on top of our necks. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So um, it's just a big egg in there. It's just yep. a big, it's just like a big stupid egg in there, and it's, if... It, a human being, if it was like a tiny, if it was a baby, maybe, but... Oh, maybe he's doing that, like, age-old, uh, like, seventh-grade science experiment where you have to, like, uh, build a bridge to, like, save an egg, you know what I mean? And, like, you have to walk across it and see if it Travis, destroys the egg. There, there was so much goddamn dumb stuff in that sentence you just <laughs> said, it would take us a week to tear it apart. <laughs> it was. It was the seven-layer bar of dumb shit. You know, an egg bridge. Yep. You know, Egg Bridge. Yeah, I saw it on uh, you literally on, uh, just Mr. Confused, Wizard. Like, five different science projects. I was like, you know, an Egg Bridge, and then an uh, Egg Bridge put volcano soda on it, and uh, and it's a volcano. It's a volcano. Let's stop talking about sitting on skulls because it's make it's literally making my my grundle uncomfortable. Like just the thought of trying to perch perch myself on a cranium. I don't think it would feel good. No, I wouldn't think so. But you know, what, you know, it would feel great. I could buy myself a new grundle with three hundred k. Or yeah. 300 pounds. Jesus Christ. This guy. This fucking guy. Do you think he's a normal in his day to day? You think I it's going to be really nice and well respected? Do you think it's Tom Hanks? Oh. Could it, wouldn't you believe it if somebody was like, yeah, he's a great actor and like, he's a real sweetheart. He's got this one thing. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap up. Um, hope you enjoyed that best of episode as much as we enjoyed making those like 10 or 11 episodes. Um, I don't remember if I enjoyed making those episodes. I don't Jared. either. There's, we, there's a, there's a pretty good chance I didn't enjoy making some of them. No, I don't remember what was going on in my life at that point. I think I referenced my girlfriend, Teresa, which sounds really weird at this point. Mm-hmm. It's like a weird time capsule to reopen these old episodes, but we hope you enjoyed them. Um, we want to say, th- let's just start it off by saying thank you again to everyone who did and donated to Max Fun Drive. It was wildly successful. We felt incredibly supported. Um, and here's the thing, just so you know, if you um, weren't able to donate, but you still would like to become a, 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 a sponsor, become a donor, you can do that at any point. You can go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Uh, you won't get the pledge gifts, but you can still support the network anytime you want to. So, Do you not get the bonus content? I think you still get the bonus content. 
If not, I will fight for you to still get the bonus content. Yeah, we, we will be in your corner. Um, but seriously, it, it, the, the response this year was absolutely bonkers. Um, I, I cannot believe how many people came out to support our show. It, it was it was a pretty amazing past couple of weeks, and, and we have you guys to thank for that. So thank, thank you, you so all much. so much. Uh, also, thanks to Blue Apron, who makes cooking at home easy. You can get your first two meals of Blue Apron free by going to blueapron.com slash mybrother. And we want to say thanks again to Me Undies as well for supporting the podcast and my genitals. Go to MeUndies.com slash my brother and get 20% off your first order. And right now you'll get free shipping. What was that, I just I just want to say, like, we hit the genitals thing pretty hard when we talk about Me Undies, but, you, but usually it's like a goof thing. And you said that so casually. I don't know why. That, that I just wanted to let you know. I wanted to stop the show and let you know that that one kind of bothered me. That was the first one that bothered you? Yeah, I think it was. That was a sincere uh, thank you, though. I really no, I, appreciate I the support that MeUndies provides. Uh, we still have tickets to the Chicago show uh, this coming Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Come, th- th- celebrate with your whole family. I know you're, I know you're wondering, McElroy Brothers, did you know that that was going to be Easter Sunday when you booked the date? And the answer is... <laughs> Um, but anyway, there's tickets available, bitly slash Chicago. Uh, please send in your questions with uh, the subject line saying which show you're going to be at. I need my Yahoo Warriors. I need my Davenports. I need my Spurlings. I need my Rays uh, to, uh, to step up and help me out, help me survive, because that's a lot of Yahoos that we're going to need for all yeah, three we shows. Yeah, it's three shows worth of questions, people. We need your help. Have we done? Um, I know we did three shows in one day before, but this is the first time we're going to three discrete cities. That I'm is very correct. excited. I'm very uh, excited as well. Um, at these shows, oh we've got God. some beautiful posters. Uh, the Justin Gray, you can see some of his "My Brother, My Brother and Me" posters on the Max Fun Store. Go to maxfunstore.com. A bunch of merch there. Just as a side note, lots of awesome "My Brother, My Brother and Me" merch. Some Sawbones merch. We're going to get some Adventure Zone merch up yeah, there pretty gonna be, soon. We're going to be filling that up uh, in, in over the next few months. So, but go so check out his posters there, so you can get super excited. With, they're going to be show specific posters, which we've never done before. We're going to have one specific one for Milwaukee, one for Chicago, one for Minneapolis. Like, and they're beautiful, you guys. They're fucking awesome. They're like, they're fucking great. I'm so definitely going to come ready to buy one so we can ride all over it and ruin it. And now that you've donated to uh, the, the Maximum Fun Network, go listen to the other Max Fun shows. There's uh, Jordan Jesse Go. Uh, there's Judge John Hodgman. There's Throwing Shade. There's Pop Rocket. There's Rendered. Uh, there's a ton of really good shows. We do other ones. J- Travis does uh, Bunker Buddies with his buddy Thank Andy. You. Justin does a medical history show called Sawbones with his wife, Sydney. Uh, me and Justin and Travis and our dad do a Dungeons and Dragons podcast called The Adventure oh, Zone. A all bunch of, that. of people and have asked. Oh, oh. Now that we've hit all of our goals and everything, we're going to totally make My Sister, My Sister and Me bonus episode happen. A lot of people have been asking about it. A lot of right. people got really excited about it. We're going to make this happen, people. Fortunately, um, our wives got excited yeah. about it because I don't know about you, but I forgot to run that by hundred percent. We said we hundred percent. A swing and a miss. I totally show, forgot. As she listened, that yeah, day. I got a I got a message from Rachel that day. Like, so I'm doing podcasts, <laughs> and huh? Then my response yep, was, "Oh shit. yeah, I forgot to run that by you first. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it before, but it hadn't become an extant idea. We are the fucking yes. worst husbands. But start thinking about questions imagine. you want to ask our wives. It's going to be. A, I'm really looking uh, forward to hearing. We don't it. know when that's. I don't know when that's going to go up. We're doing so because we hit these uh, uh, pledge tiers. We're going to do two bonus episodes throughout the year for donors. Uh, one of them's going to be my sister, my sister, and me, and we're also going to do. Have we announced what the other thing is going to be? It. We're going to do a Freaky Friday swap with some other podcast on the Maximum Fun Network. Don't know what that's going to be yet. Uh, I got a few in mind, but uh, we we will see how it shakes out. So that should be very interesting. So it's going to be a pretty bonkers year. Uh, before, I've said bonkers a lot. Before we get past it, I want to say thank you. Thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of their theme song. It's a departure off of the album Putting the Days to Bed. It feels, it feels good, it does, right? It's like a very it does, phonetically. It feels really good. Yeah. I think it's iambic pentameter. Yeah, it just flows. I think it's like one of those things where it's like those are words of power, like Fremen. Uh, let's Fremen shit. Let's throw it back. To, yeah, it's a Dovahkiin shout. Let's throw it back to the past and hit you up with that final Yahoo um, goodness. Thank you all so much for listening. 
Uh, we'll be back with uh, probably one of our live shows uh, next Monday. Uh, it'll, I promise, at least one of the three of them is going to sound really good, and that'll yep. be the one we throw up first. So uh, thank you all so much for listening, and we will see you later. But not too, not Perfect. This final Yahoo was sent in by Gali Ali. Thank you, Gali. It's by Yahoo Answers user question mark who asks, Did you ever guest star on The Golden Girls? <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. Squeeze out the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.